2016, I've got a whole row of books right here. Um, first book, well actually these first couple of books I'm also hoping to finish before the end of the year. Again, I don't know if that's going to happen, but they will be the first ones that I pick up in January if I don't. First is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I'm not going to say anything because this book is all over YouTube. I don't want spoilers. I tried really hard not to spoil myself on it, but this is going to be the first book that I read after I'm done with those other two. Uh, the next book that I've got is Reap the Wind by Karen Chance. This is the most recent book in her Cassie Palmer series, and that is about the Pythia. She is a modern girl in, the, well she starts out in New York and most of the books take place in Las Vegas. And she is the prophet of Apollo. Uh, she tells his fortune, she can see the future, but she is surrounded by vampires and everybody's trying to kill her. And it's romantic, it's exciting, and I love these books. I have been waiting for this book for over a year. And I'm just trying to get to it. I'm, it's actually a toss-up. I may end up reading this before Carry On, but I love these books. They're one of my favorite urban fantasy series. I adore them, so if you are curious about urban fantasy, if you like romance, um, vampires, anything of that nature, I highly recommend that you pick up these books. Next we have The Eternal Files by, Renee, by Leanna Renee Heber. This one just came out last year and this is about paranormal investigators in the Victorian period. I'm really excited about this one. I've been meaning to read it since April and I have not gotten to it yet. So this is another one that's going to be one of my first picks for January. Next up, I've got um, Native American Myths. This is by, well it's edited by Jake Jackson. Um, I'm kind of curious about Native American mythology. It's not something that I've read a lot of, but um, but I want to find out more about it. So that's one of the reasons why I picked up this book. Uh, the next book is one that I just recently found at Half Price Books, and it is The Haunted Bookshop by Christopher Morley. And again, I don't know anything about this other than the title, but wouldn't it be amazing to read a book about a haunted bookshop? I mean, really, you may notice one here is that I love vintage books. I actually have a bookshop up in Belfountain, Ohio that I love going to. They have a lot of antique and vintage books. They're usually priced pretty reasonably since them can be a little expensive, but I love going up there and just searching through all of their books. And this um, next one is called The Egyptian. It's by Mika Wolpari. I don't know anything about this one either. I did look up a summary when I purchased it, but I don't remember anything about it. Queen of Bedlam by Robert McCammon, and I love Victorian England, that's another of the historical periods that I love to study, and I actually recent fin recently finished writing a manuscript that uses Bedlam as, or the Bethlehem Insane Asylum in London in the Victorian period as one of the settings, so I was kind of curious to see what this author's take would be on it. Well, Penelope's Progress by Kate Douglas Wiggin. And all I know about this one is that it is about a young lady who is traveling through Scotland in, I believe, the 1890s. And this is a travel journal from the period, so it's actually nonfiction. But I can't wait to read it, and I was drawn to the cover because of that gorgeous plaid. I love plaid. And I also really love Scotland. This is The Weird Sisters by uh, Eleanor Brown. And I thought that this was The Weird Sisters as in the, um, the Harry Potter band. There's a novel called The Weird Sisters with a Y, and that's where they get their name. But um, this is about uh, three sisters in a very eccentric family. And everyone in their family loves, loves books. Um, something happens that sends them all back to their childhood home, so they're adjusting in that. And this is the first five books of The Wizard of Oz by Frank L. Baum. I read these really, really long time ago. I love The Wizard of Oz, though. It's one of my favorite movies, and I would really love to reread the books 
and get a little bit further in the series because I didn't finish reading it the first time I read it. My next book is from another author that I met at Steampunk Symposium, and it is Tales of the Airship Neverland by John R. White. And this is a steampunk pirate story. So I'll, I'll read you the synopsis for this one because this one I know isn't very well known. Grand Admiral Winifred Darling has just been promoted to command the entire defenses of the British Admiralty. Her first assignment is to defend the kingdom against the return of the disgraced exile Captain James Hooker, allied with a fleet of she pirates and his Eldritch, Eldritch paramour, the witch Elspeth. Hooker is bent on the destruction of the ruling family, including the infant Peter, Prince of the Air Nation. Wendy will soon find that she is on the run, aided only by her loyal crew and the mysterious inventions of one Nikola Tesla. Uh, the next one was recommended to me on Tumblr, um, and I picked it up mainly because the person that I saw who reviewed it said that it was better than Harry Potter, and I have a hard time believing that, so I want to give it a try, and that is Skullduggery Pleasant. And I, this is another one I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, all I know is that it is about this guy, Skullduggery Pleasant, who is a walking skeleton. And I believe he's sort of like a detective type character. And he's protecting this young girl. So that's all I know about this series. I want to give it a go. And hopefully I'll get to that early in 2016. This is Steel by Carrie Vaughn. And I have read her um, Kitty Norville series. I'm behind on it, but I've read, I think, probably the first ten books. And really enjoyed that. So this is her first YA novel. And I believe that this is high fantasy. And it's about a young girl who finds a broken sword. And when she picks it up, she finds herself on the deck of a pirate ship. So this should be pretty exciting. And I can't wait to read that one either. I have another fantasy book here. Um, this is The Witches of East End by Melissa de la Cruz. I loved the television series that this was based off of. A lot of my favorite books I find because I watched the television show or the movie, and this is no exception. I wish that there was a third season of this show, and I can't wait to read the book and see how it's different from the show. My next one is going to make a lot of you laugh, I think, if you're even close to my age, which is The Last Unicorn. This was one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. I didn't even know that it was a book until I found this at Half Price. It's written by Peter S. Spiegel, and I want to know if the book is as trippy as the movie, because the movie is just so messed up. It was so much fun as a kid, and then I rewatched it in college, and that movie is just, it's insane. So, I want to read the book and compare. We're getting close to the end. I'm more than halfway through. Uh, the next one I found at a thrift store, and I just thought that it sounded interesting. I really love reading about the history of women, and uh, women in the workplace, and how things have changed. Women of Pleasure Quarters. This is by Leslie Downer, and it is a look at geisha and their role in Japanese culture, um, the role that they play in business. Um, so it's not just looking at the prostitution side of things, which most geisha are not prostitutes, um, but just kind of how women are used as a social lubricant in Japan. He has placed himself on my TBR shelf. Are you two pets? That would be a no. Um, this one is Madame Sarah by Cornelia Otis Skinner. Again, a very bland cover, but I was attracted to it at the flea market just because it has a woman's name as the title. And there's also some neat photography in here. Really amazing dresses. And I can't remember what this one is supposed to be about. It should be good. I, if I remember correctly, Madame Sarah is a spy of some kind, but I could be wrong about that. 
My next two are more books that I have had for longer than I would care to admit that I have not read yet. Um, the first one is Un peu de tout, second French reader by, um, I'm not sure if this is an editor or an author, but it's a Solze Duro. Um, this one I can't even remember where I got it from. I think I inherited it from someone. But it's um, a French workbook from I think the 50s and 47. It's from 1947. But I've been trying to learn French for a really long time. And I've got a couple of old readers that I thought it might be nice to go through and actually read since they've got a lot of grammatical information in them and they're intended for people who are learning French. Princess Princess, en français. I picked this up when I was traveling through Paris um, ages and ages ago. Uh, and this is a manga series that was translated into French. And I have seen the anime version and thought that having a familiar story with a lot of pictures to read would make it easier. It took me ages to get through the first book, so I haven't even started the second one. The next three are all by Rob Thurman, and they are Double Tick, Slashback, and Downfall. These are three books in the Caliandro series, which is urban fantasy, and it's about two half-brothers that are very close. And the younger brother, Cal, is half-demon, and his older brother, Nico, has to kind of keep him out of trouble and keep him from killing people. So. I need to get caught up on this series. These are the next three books that I have in the series. There might be more after this. I don't know. I haven't looked into it because I'm so far behind and I need to finish these first before I can move on with the series. After that, I have two more urban fantasy books. These are not from the same series. Uh, the first one is Dead Witch Walking by Kim Harrison. And uh, then I have Three Days to Dead by Kelly Metting. Both of these were recommended to me by my roommate. Um, this one actually takes place in Ohio, which is one of the reasons that I want to read it. But other than that, I don't really know a whole lot about them, except they're sort of in the same vein as the Rob Thurman books. And then the next two I picked up, um, they're also 1920s books, or they're set in the 1920s, which is why I grabbed them. The first one is Dark Metropolis. And this is by, I can't find the author's name on the cover because they covered it up, Jacqueline Dullamore. The one is Miss Bungle's book. This is a book about a writer in England who writes a smash hit novel in the early 20s, and then all of a sudden her characters start coming to life. And then the last book on my list, which should probably really be the first book that I read in 2016, um, is the Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. I have this lined up that was given to me right after the movies came out. Um, as you can see, I have already read The Lord of the Rings and, uh, or I'm sorry, The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers. So I need to read the third one. I took a break after The Two Towers because Two Towers really is not my favorite part of the series. It's not been my favorite movie. I thought that the book version was just really hard to get to, or to get through. So I'm taking a break, and then hopefully I will get back to the finale at the beginning of the year. So that's it. That's what I am planning on reading in 2016. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.